Great to see you again, Jamie. Great to be here with you, Durham. It's amazing. Welcome back. When we saw you last, we were at the top of the Mount of Olives from the east, looking at the city of David and the temple from above. It was Jerusalem Day, and we talked about how all those important areas are once again in Israeli hands. And now we've jumped across Jerusalem, as you can see. We've literally jumped across the entire ancient city of Jerusalem and landed here in what is perhaps the most magnificent viewpoint in Jerusalem, the southern area. And there's a good reason why, Duran. Why are we here? What's special about this? Right where we're standing over here, round about this area, one event takes place over here that changes mankind forever. God commands his servant Abraham to take his son, his beloved son Isaac, and sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. We read in the Bible that Abraham, after the third day, when he leaves Beersheba, which is located to the south of where we're standing now, three days walk from here, will see the place from the distance, and the place is Mount Moriah. So right here, Jamie, that's Mount Moriah behind us. You can see that there's the Temple Mount is on Mount Moriah, right? Yes. The gold dome is the Dome of the Rock, which is standing over the place that the temple stood. Below it, by the way, we have the City of David, the original city of Jerusalem, standing below it in the Mount of Olives. Jamie, Abraham arrives here. He's walked three days. He leaves his servants. He takes Yitzhak by his hand. And what does he see before he goes on this journey? What, what, we're, what we're seeing now, what we're looking at now, this is exactly what he would have seen. Take away the houses, the structures around. This is the original topography and landscape he would have seen, no doubt about wow. that. That's amazing. So we've got Abraham, the founder of monotheisms right here. Uh, how many people in the world does that relate to? Well, the event, the binding of Isaac, is an event that changed mankind, obviously, defines paganism, monotheism and Jews, Muslims, and Christians, we're talking four billion people living today. Forget the other generations that have passed away. Four billion people that come to Jerusalem and sanctify the city in different ways. But beyond doubt, four billion people. For the Jewish nation, this is beyond doubt the most sacred city in the world. This is where God chose to have his house, the temple. So. Abraham establishes monotheism. Hundreds of years go by, and there's a shepherd that is shepherding his sheep here, and I think our viewers even may know who he is. Who was that shepherd, and what was he doing here? 3,000 years ago, 800 years after Abraham, a young shepherd called David. David, the David. The David, who becomes king later on. David, coming from Beit Lechem, a three-hour walk to the south from where we're standing now, will take his herd around this area. When he arrives to this region, to this area, there's only one spring there. He can provide water to his herd, which is the Gihon Spring. The Gihon Spring, located to the valley, right-hand side of the city of David, the city where it all began, ancient Jerusalem. He would have taken down his herd to there to water them. This is what he sees. He will see that city fortified, protected by Jebusites who were Canaanite people. He would never imagine that one day he will come back to capture the city. And if you would have tapped him on the shoulder, the young boy, and said one day this city is going to be called the City of David. I doubt he would have believed he that. He wouldn't have believed it. So David goes on, he becomes king, he unifies the 12 tribes of Israel. And originally David's capital was in Hebron to the south of us which was the natural capital, was the head of his, his tribe of Judea. Of Where the Judah. three patriarchs are buried. The three patriarchs and the three matriarchs are buried there as well. Why would David leave Hebron? I mean, we take it for granted that Jerusalem is great. Why would he come here and establish this as the capital of the Jewish people? We have to remember that if he unites the 12 tribes of Israel, he comes from the tribe of Judah. And Judah had a capital where David reigned in the beginning, which is Hebron. And if he reigns from there, it is not a neutral capital. He has to choose a city uninhabited by Israelites. This city inhabited by Canaanites will be captured. Add to that the city that was chosen. He will come over here, he will capture the city, and from here he will unite the 12 tribes. This is also a city that is located right in the center of the promised land, the land of Israel, where around it the 12 tribes of Israel lived. You know, Jamie, this reminds me when you're talking about Jerusalem being located in the middle of this area, of a modern-day capital today, many of our viewers, probably some of them at the very least come from the United States of America, 
Washington, D.C. I've heard people say- Great example, DC wrong. is David City. It's the same idea. You've got Washington, D.C. It's not a part of any of the 50 states. So basically, George Washington and the early founding fathers- Oh, the founding fathers were believers. They were believers. They, they were familiar. They got the idea from here. They understood David did the same thing. 3,000 years ago, this little hamlet, the city of David and the temple, become basically the head of a republic of the 12 tribes of Israel. Yes, unifying the 12 tribes, making it into a united kingdom. Amazing. Very powerful kingdom. Daron, tell us a little bit about your plans over here, the city of David. What do you want to do over here? Well, we understand the city of David, the tour actually begins here because anyone that wants to experience ancient Jerusalem needs to begin from this overlook and take in what David and Solomon would have seen when they look at the city with the temple above it and the Mount of Olives. And in fact, we're building a visitor center in this area. It's in the planning stages. We're using technology in this gorgeous view. People will be able to come and they'll be able to look as what this area looked like thousands of years ago. In the same way that we explained it with Abraham and David, they will see that with their own eyes. And from here, this will be an embarkation point for people that are visiting the ancient city of Jerusalem. Just below us, we have the Peace Forest, where we have lots of different activities. We've got Segway rides, and we've got special carts, and zip lines, and a lot of activities. And so people will be able to come here for a multi-day experience. Now, this isn't only our idea. The municipality of Jerusalem is now building eight hotels along this ridge, because it's obvious that this area is going to be really the launching point for a tour of biblical Jerusalem. Thank you, Jamie, so much for Thank taking you. us here. We are blessed to be able to visit this area, blessed to be able to do this with you, all of our viewers around the world. And we'll see you next time as we take you to another place from a zoom out from the city of David. The city of David, where it all began.